Well, hi, I am Kuba. Uh, I'd like to share some of our experience uh, with using gRPC uh, in our apps. Uh, at first, I'd like to say what is gRPC. The, uh, the GDPR shortcut is just some one of our internal jokes because before we uh, we started using it, uh, many people just mistakenly use GDPR instead of gRPC. So that's kind of our internal joke. Uh, what is gRPC? gRPC is a way to get generated models for your API layer. Uh, it is powered by protocol buffers. Uh, another way, uh, another advantage is that you, you get generated networking code, which is powered by HTTP2. So you don't have to write it yourself because how ordinary up, uh, up stack looks like, it is basically, if you use JSON or another another way of uh, data interaction, you have URL session somewhere down, down, down your layer. Then you probably use Alamo Fire or you use URL session directly, which is then wrapped probably into some into another API layer, which um, kind of is adapter to your stack, for example, to make it more testable or whatever. Then when you fetch your data from API, you probably use Codable or another mapping framework, which, which translates the received data into some of your models. Well, and then you receive your model. Well, with gRPC, it is uh, much simpler because using gRPC, you substitute all, all those boxes with just one. So you just define your models in some platform independent language, which is proto protocol buffers here. So pro from backend, you receive the definition of uh, your models you just run it through your through protocol buffer compiler and you get generated models and the network layer. Well, that's uh, all about the theory, let's say, because we, uh, in Eki we don't like talks with which you just go through README. So we'll, we'll rather share the knowledge and our experience. So is it really good how it sounds? Does it sound good, right? Because we write less code, and less code means less, bu less bugs and less work. Well, here are some points that I'd like to go through. We'll, I'll show you how we test the requests, how we, uh, how we lock our data, how we share the proto files, because that's, that are the data which contain the definition of the models and of all requests and endpoints that uh, the backend provides. Then I'll tell you about streams and I'll tell you what streams are and how we work with them. And we had also some issues like uh, some naming, issue naming con conventions. Uh, we had some issues with generating testing stops so you can test all the implementation you do. And I'll walk you very briefly through other platform issues. So let's start with testing the requests. Uh, because gRPC and protocol buffers are a way to exchange data uh, in binary format, not they are not text. So it's not that easy. Because when you have text-based APIs, you just use Postman or, well, Terminal or whatever tools you like to debug requests and see what what response you receive. And when you when you get data in binary format, you it's more complicated. But there's a tool we like uh, we like to use. It's called Bloom RPC. It is uh, it looks like Postman. But it's not that sophisticated because you don't have uh, environment variables or environments and uh, tools like that. 
but you can just you know input requests in JSON. It is transformed then to the binary form, and you can send and receive send requests and receive responses just as you're used to. You just need to provide the proto files as they contain all the definitions, which is what you see on the left side, and then it it works like charm like, like you are used to. The other way is some um, debug logging in our uh, JSON, in our applications where we use JSON as data exchange format. We use a library um, we created ourselves. It's called Recress, or you, you do you use whatever logging framework you like. So you see uh, text output in your console. Well, how you how do we do that in uh, with, with gRPC. Well, the typical use case we use debug logging for request is that we received some some non-valid data from API. So in gRPC, because the Perl files contain contain all the definitions you can receive, it's uh, it's a situation that uh, situation that you receive non-valid data is very well, it cannot occur. So we don't use anything to log to you debug log the request. Be um, because this, the proto files are strict definition. It's a contract between the client and the server. So you cannot receive invalid data. Well, you can, but you shouldn't. Well, as the proto files contain uh, all the definitions and they get updated through through the development you need to share them well you you, pro you very probably you have a backend developer you have ios application you have android application some web clients they all need to share all the profiles uh, so typically backend uh, backend developers they just publish the profiles somewhere and good good idea is to use git because git is powerful and you don't need to invent anything new it would be it might be a good idea to share them through cocopods or some some dependency manager like that but you know, the the backend developer well he never heard of cocopods and and everyone use git so you don't have to invent something new and because we in a key we like to automize we use Fastlane almost for everything. So we have a script that, that clones the backend repository uh, and then runs the proto, proto buff, protocol buffers compiler to, so we get the generated models. Well, now we're going through gRPC streams. Uh, maybe you would ask what are gRPC streams? Well, if you have some table view or some list of data, you probably need to need to use pagination. With gRPC, you can do that as well. But better approach is to use the streams because uh, the apps do not display pages of data. They display a stream of data Be because when you go through a table or list, uh, you, you have no paging, paging is old concept, I'd say. So the streams are cursor based. So it depends. So you would just say, give me another, another item from the list and you receive it or not. Uh, the gRPC stream is an object which defines where you are in the stream. It has its cursor, but it is very important you when you open a stream you have to close it uh, for me i was expecting when i was implementing it implementing it the first time that when i lose the reference to that stream it is automatically closed it is not that's important and it will in our stack it was a bit complicated to define where it should be when it should be closed so we needed to extend the stream by such logic. 
Uh, but the code that is generated by gRPC is, well, it is based on a lot of protocols, which is fine. But when you need to extend it, it was a bit problem because you needed to, uh, needed to know when it is deallocated or so. And I often ended with with error that uh, I needed to put protocol somewhere where protocol uh, cannot be. So I used a uh, sorcery that helped me to cr to generate automatically objects that encapsulate the stream and that object is I know when it's deallocated so in its the in it I was able to call the close close uh, function on the stream. Uh, I'd share that uh, tem sorcery template later if you are interested. Mm. Then we run into an issue when uh, the generated models were hard to work with because uh, gRPC models use package name, package-based naming. So the classes that, uh, sorry, the structs that was that were generated looked like com underscore article service article, which is something we don't like to use in our apps. We prefer to use article. Well, in that profile, the package name could be omitted, so you get a fancy name like article. Well, we, in a key, we like to deliver quality software, so we write tests, of course. I think everyone should. Uh, gRPC can generate testing code. Uh, there is a few compiler options you can provide and so only the code you are interested in is generated so we have two scripts one generates a code for a client and the other one generates code for testing because uh, the grpc generated code is a good candidate to for a separate framework so we have a framework that contains all the grpc code and then we have the app which uses that framework. But in this in this framework, we only generate the client client side code because we don't need a server side code. The server side code is use, useful for server when you build an API. But in iOS app, you don't need a server side code, so we generate just the client one. But uh, the, we also in that framework in client, you don't need the test, testable testable code. Sorry, testing code. So we generate it separately just for the test. So you can test it, but there's a big, not big, there's an issue that uh, as long as we were generating just the client code, uh, the testing code wasn't compilable. Also, you need to generate the testable, the testing implementation. And this would be uh, one, uh, I think, the last point. Uh, we are, we've run some to, into some issues. Basically, in iOS and Android apps, there are no problems. On web clients, we needed to have another layer before our gRPC server, which I'm not sure what it does exactly, but it was necessary because uh, uh, and then web clients weren't able to fetch any data. Uh, it is called Envoy, and you can find it on GitHub. Uh, and also, the streams I talked about, they weren't, we weren't capable of reading them on web clients. And I think that would be all. Oh, no. There are some... Uh, uh, well, I think that we should ask if we want to use it, because there are some. Pros and cons, of course. Well, the, pro, the pros are definitely that you have a contract between API and client. You don't have to ask the developer or consult documentation if an, some property is optional or not. You just have the, this contract and it will be fulfilled. All, it should be fulfilled all, time, all the time. You write less code. Less code means less bugs, less um, effort, 
and also less pain, I'd say. You also transfer less data because the binary data exchange is is less data consuming because, for example, JSON is very descriptive, it is human readable, but it is very inefficient. Also, we have some some cons, which is that gRPC is not used that widely, so it means that you ha you don't have many people that understand it, which is you always need someone who understands that, ex uh, that data exchange format, but uh, always you need someone. Uh, also, you, you still need correct version control, I'd say, because uh, even if you use gRPC and protocol buffers, you still can, ba can make breaking changes. You should not. It is very simple not to, not to make them, but still it is possible. And also you have some web issues. It, it looks like that there are more cons than pros, but I think that the pros are such big that we like to use them at, and we, we hope that we'll use gRPC on most of our projects in the future. I think that that's all from me. If you have some questions. I'd say that it means more that the server side controls the client. Okay, uh, because the uh, server just has some code that sends the data, and the uh, when you call the protocol buffer compiler or the gRPC compiler with arguments that generate test testable code, it just generates a struct or a stream which you, pr you provide it with the data it should send, and then you just when you call the receive the receive methods on it, it will behave like the original stream. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Encrypted. In the profile there, you just uh, can define whatever type you like so you so you can define like raw data or something like that and that would be possible but i think that you should do you have to do it yourself not sure if at the end i think it should be it will be before you just call the grpc i'm not sure about it Okay, anyone else? Yeah. Does gRPC help you somehow with API versioning? Well, not maybe not gRPC. It's maybe more like protocol buffer, it's maybe more in protocol buffers because protocol buffers allow you to change models in without non -break, without breaking changes so you don't, you don't need to because you in protocol buffers you just define that some property has so has an index or id and you don't have you don't you use the id just once so if you add or change change it it uh, you just use different id i don't know if it's understandable but it's like uh, it's more protocol buff Buffers your way of data. Yes, something like that. But every proper property has its own ID. Well, you can you can version in way that uh, JSON APIs are, J, JSON APIs are used to. You can let, let's say that this endpoint has version two, but it's not necessary when you use protocol buffers and gRPC. Mm -hmm. Are there some types of projects for which you recommend using the Well, 
uh, from the experience we have, which is not a lot, uh, but I'd like to have it everywhere. Okay, we have. I think we have no more question. Okay, so I thank you for your patience. <laughs>